Warm greetings, Code Monkeys and fellow Vedsies. Welcome back. Oh, they know the bloody drill by now. Just get on with it. Where would you set up your safe zone if there was a zombie outbreak or other apocalypse? I would go straight to my friend Connor's house. For a couple of reasons. One, his house is relatively secure because it has a nice big fence on three sides. Just off of his backyard is a small slope leading to a river, which is pretty defensible. Plus, he knows several people with access to cannons. No, I am not making that up. Which do you prefer? Practical effects? or CGI. That, Code Monkeys, is what we call a false dichotomy. There are some things that practical effects do better, there are some things that CGI do better. For example, a creature like Chewbacca looks fantastic as a practical effect suit. But a character like Groot, for example, would suffer if he wasn't CGI. I believe in using a mixture of the two whenever possible. Can't we all just get along? What are some of Entropy and Kleper's favorite movies? I don't actually watch a whole lot of movies. I prefer to read and listen to TED Talks, and I also have an old box set of Bill Nye the Science Guy that I watch quite a lot. I have a bunch of old VHS tapes in a box, but Jesse says I'm not supposed to show them to anyone. <sighs> Would you be willing to give us a tour of the posters in your room? Sure thing, let me just pick up the camera here. Alright, I figured I would start up here. This is a TF2 poster, it's just part of the lore of TF2. Uh, I like TF2 a lot and I like the lore. Uh, I think the setting's a lot of fun, I think it's really strong. Uh, over here, we have another TF2 poster, this one depicting the sniper and the spy. This is from the Sniper vs. Spy update. Um, this isn't really a poster that I like, I, I wanted really badly, but there were two TF2 posters that I really wanted and it was cheaper to, to buy this, uh, this set of five than it was to just buy the two individually, and that was a gift from Maddie. So, thank you for that, honey. Uh, over here we have Spider-Man shooting a web, pretty straightforward. Uh, we have uh, another TF2 poster, uh, this is the Soldier Victory poster, this is one of the ones that I really wanted. Along with this one here, also a TF2 poster, Force of Nature, um, one of my favorite uh, weapons in the game. I, I love playing Scout, um, not, as quite, not, not quite as much as I like playing Medic, but I, I like playing Scout a lot. Uh, this is Trisha Hirschberger, she is a, uh, a very uh, cool nerd lady. Um, she really likes this pinup style art, and she's, uh, I, I really I like these... Uh, um, sort of 8-bit flowers down here. I just think the poster's really, really cute, and I think Trisha Hirschberger's really, really cool, so I got her poster. Uh, over here, another person I think is really, really cool, Hank Green. Uh, this is uh, the poster that came with the uh, This Machine Pones Noobs CD, so I like having that on my wall. Uh, here is a uh, is the Adam West Dark Knight Rises poster that I made. Um, this actually comes from an image I found online, but I sort of uh, took it into Photoshop and I illustrated the whole thing by hand, made it sort of more cartoony and higher res so I could print it out as a poster. Really like that one. Uh, up here is a, uh, a single frame from, uh, uh the film reel of the first Spider-Man movie, or rather, I mean, it's not the first Spider-Man movie, I don't think, but the first Sam Raimi one. Uh, this is a poster, uh, by, uh, Jeff Jacques. He is a, uh, a webcomic artist. Uh, he creates questionable content, which is my favorite. Uh, web comic, and uh, that's what this is from right here. It's just some of the characters from that comic playing D&D. It's actually signed, which is cool. Uh, another TF2 poster here. Uh, let me move the freaking fish. Uh, another TF2 poster right here. Uh, this sandwich uh, edible device carried by the heavy. Uh, I like this one too. Um, here we have... Uh, here, let me, see, let me see if I can get rid of the glare. There we go. Um, this is uh, Jason Mews and Kevin Smith. Uh, dressed up as Silent Bob. This is back when uh, Kevin Smith was still making good movies. Um, down here we have Juno. Uh, movie poster from Juno. I really like Juno. Uh, this is a Evil Baby Orphanage poster, which came with the uh, box set of stuff that I got for contributing to the Evil Baby Orphanage quick uh, Kickstarter. Rather, uh, Down here is a little t-shirt that... Um, there, was this in, there was this earthquake that interrupted the World Series in 1989. Uh, and also, it was a really devastating earthquake, and I actually slept through it when I was a baby. I was born in California, if I haven't mentioned that before. And my aunt made me this shirt, uh, wore it for a time, and uh, then she kind of saved it, and then made this for me, and gave it to me uh, either as a birthday or Christmas present, I don't remember which. And I really like it. Uh, I think it's cool. Um, this is a painting that I did in college. Uh, I honestly don't know what it's supposed to mean, but I just kind of like the look of it and I think it's cool. There's like some like either like otter or ferret or weasel or something like that in like this oversized torso with a business suit handing uh, a stack of $100 bills to the flying spaghetti monster which is coming out of a cup of ramen. 
I have no idea what any of this is supposed to mean, but uh, <laughs> I don't know. I like it. I just think it looks kind of cool. Oh, look, falling off the door again down here. Uh, we have this one falls off all the time is uh, this amazing Spider-Man poster. Um, it's uh, a recreate a poster size recreation of one of the more uh, famous Spider-Man moments, uh, the death of Gwen Stacy. Uh, up here, I'm sorry if there's a little bit of noise from downstairs, up here is the Communist Party poster. Um, just a bunch of communist figures at a literal party. I don't know, I, I like puns, especially visual puns, and the whole thing is just very silly and entertaining to me. So I like those. Um, and then the last one here is was a gift from Maddie. This was a, uh, th th there are people that uh, host these live showings of the room where people like throw stuff at the screen and all that. And that's what this is from. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a ink pressed uh, poster that she got for me. So yeah, those are the posters in my room. I like them quite a lot. What would be your dream review? I don't know that I really have a dream review. I just kind of review what I want to and what seems like a good idea. If I had to say anything is a dream review at this point, I would like to do a retrospective of the Jack and Daxter video game series, but I don't really have the technological means to do something like that right now. So somewhere down the line, Hopefully I can get that accomplished. What's one question you really wish people would ask, but they never do? You guys honestly do a really good job of coming up with cool and interesting questions. One thing I do wish there was a little bit more of, though, is kind of the weird sort of out there questions. I'll show you what I mean by that a little bit farther down this list. What anime movies slash series have you seen, and what are your thoughts on them? Jeez, that's a pretty freaking broad question, isn't it? My buddy Pete was a really, really big otaku back when we were in high school. Basically, he only spent money on two things. Wargaming miniatures and anime. And his anime collection was insane at one point. He's pared it down a lot over the years. I can just try and think of a couple of them that stick out in my mind. Um, Nerima Daikon Brothers I remember we really liked. That was basically an anime parody of the Blues Brothers. It was weird. Fooly Cooly is cool. Oh, what was that other one called? Something Leaves. Uh, let me look it up, see if I can find it. Dead Leaves! Dead Leaves! That was Weird. I don't even remember if it was good, Dead Leaves. I just, it, it sticks out in my mind. Oh, another one that we were really, really into was Ghost in the Shell. I actually have a copy of it right here. We watched the crap out of that one. What do you think makes a good film adaptation? The things that make a good film adaptation are the same things that just make a good film generally. Good actors, responsible director, good art and set design. All that ultimately matters in the creation of film, the creation of art in general really, is whether whether or not the people who are making it really, really care. And yeah, budget is a portion of it too. Money, can't live without it, unfortunately. What are your thoughts on Nicole Arbor's video, Dear Fat People? I got about 45 seconds into that video before turning it off in disgust. The one thing I do want to say about it though is that I've heard people say that while she might have been saying some mean things, uh, it was mainly just the way that she said it that was mean and wrong. No. No. There are so many factors other than what a person eats that determine what they look like physically, including their weight. There are people that are genetically predisposed to be at a certain weight. That's a simple scientific fucking fact. Fat does not equal unhealthy. It does not equal lazy. It does not equal dumb. You see this? This is fat. You see this? This is also fat. Nobody should feel like they have the right to tell other people what they can and cannot do with their bodies. Whether it be about weight, or physical intimacy, or whatever, it's nobody's business but your own what you do with your body. There are some people that barely eat at all and still carry fat. There are some people that eat fast food every day and never gain weight. People like this Nicole Arbor person need to stop thinking that they're better than somebody because of the way they look. It's disgusting, and I hate it, and I'm mad. So I'm gonna do another question now. What other functions do Entropy's goggles do other than scan DNA? Can they shoot lasers? Of course they don't shoot lasers, that would be stupid. Unless you've got some kind of super powered neck, then head mounted weaponry is just asinine. If you've ever seen someone fire a gun in a movie, you'll notice that their hand kicks back a little bit. That's because there is force required to propel the projectile forward. And because there's force going in this direction, there's also some that comes back in this direction. That force is called recoil. If I were to put lasers inside my goggles, then every time I fired them, it would be snapping my head back. 
And while I could make myself some sort of neck brace, it just seems more practical to carry a pistol. As for what else my goggles are capable of besides DNA scanning, you're going to have to try a lot better than that to gather intelligence on me. How do you think Spider-Man is going to turn out since they have another superhero with bug powers? Well, if you want to get technical, they actually don't have another superhero with bug powers because Ant-Man does not have bug powers. He has a suit which enables him to shrink down to the size of a bug and also allows him to communicate with ants, but he does not have bug powers. But so what if they do both have bug themes? I don't understand why that matters. More than one person can have a bug theme, just like more than one person can have super strength. They hand up super strength like fucking candy in superhero movies. Whether Spider-Man is going to be good or not has nothing to do with Ant-Man. Once again, it is just about whether or not the people who are handling the property care about the property. What does Entropy think of using robots for world domination? Well, there's no such thing as a completely reliable henchman, but robots do tend to be quite a bit more reliable than humans. The trick is you have to try and make sure that their artificial intelligence doesn't become sentient, because then you have bad times. There was this one time where I was lonely at college and decided I was going to try and make myself a robotic hamster for a pet. I can still hear the screams at night. What will it take for us to get a really good movie based on a video game? You know, I think the reason that video games have such a hard time translating to movies is that video games as an artistic medium are kind of defined by their interactivity and you can't really do that with a movie. There are games like, I don't know, the Uncharted series, for example, that already have a pretty film-like quality to them, so you could reasonably easily take that and make it into a decent movie adaptation, but really, what would be the point? The game is already so much like a movie in the way it presents itself that I just don't see the point of adapting it. So yeah, I don't really have an answer for this one. Sorry. Do you have favorite D&D &D characters that you've played? Do I have favorite D&D &D characters that I've played? This is the binder that I have filled with all of my D&D &D characters. They're in separate sections. There's uh, one area for active characters, that is characters I'm playing in games that are currently going on. There's inactive, which is where I keep my characters that are currently sort of on the bench, as in the games that they are a part of are kind of on hiatus right now. Then there's the retired section, which is by far the biggest. And then back here, we have what I call the Hall of Fame, which is where I keep all of my favorite characters or Characters that are noteworthy to me in some way. There's Kelthane, who is my elven ranger. He is my all-time favorite character. We have Darius Alexander Corinthian, who was my rogue trader character. I should actually tell a story about him at some point. There's Bach, my paladin. Oh, Glimble. He's my bard. Glimble, Knockney, Garium, Bartholomew, Bartimaeus, Papeshafe, Esquire, to be specific. Horkle, he was my very first Pathfinder character. And of course, Marlek, my very, very first D&D &D character ever. He was a sorcerer. There's a couple more of those in here, but I think you get the gist. If you were a tree, what tree would you be? See, this is what I meant when I was talking about weird kind of out there questions. What kind of tree would I be? Um, I don't know. I'd probably be an oak tree. I don't know why. I, I, I like oaks. Actually, is it cheating to say I would be Groot? I don't care. I'm, I'm picking Groot. Either Groot or one of the Ents from Lord of the Rings. Oh, so cool. Which authors do you consider your biggest influences? Jim Butcher, who is the author of The Dresden Files, even though I've only read a small portion of that series thus far, is a really, really big influence on me already. I love Jim Butcher's writing style. In terms of world building, Tolkien is the big one. I know it's kind of sacrilegious to say this, but I don't really think Tolkien was much of an author. The Lord of the Rings is a very very slow-paced piece of work. But Tolkien's skill as a world builder is pretty much unparalleled. Like, the only other person who I would put on the same level of world building as Tolkien is, like, J.K. Rowling. There's another one, J.K. Rowling. Another one is R.A. Salvatore, who is uh, a big writer in the Forgotten Realms novels. Not so much in terms of character or dialogue, but I really, really like the way that Salvatore writes action. Have you thought about starting a Patreon account? The thing about starting a Patreon account is I, I just, I don't know 
how worth it it would be. Yes, I just recently passed the 2,000 subscriber mark, but there is a very small core of people that I sort of think of as my, my primary audience. When I say primary, I mean these are the people that watch every video that I make, because there are a lot of people here that are just here for Disney Direct DVDs and don't watch anything else that I do. And that's fine, I don't have a problem with that, but it's only a very small part of what I do on this channel. But that very small group that watches every single video that I make is about 200 people. Let's say I were to set up a Patreon account, which I believe pays out monthly. Let's be generous and say that of those 200, maybe around half would be willing to contribute to a Patreon. But of course, not everyone who is willing to contribute financially is able to contribute financially. Financially. So again, let's say maybe half of the people who want to contribute can and let's say that each one of those 50 people donates like a dollar So that'd be about $50 a month and for that amount of money I would maybe be able to guarantee like one video every two weeks and at least one full-length review a month because I do have a day job Unfortunately, I wish I didn't I wish I could do this as a job But I just don't have the kind of following that makes that feasible. I don't know What do you guys think of me setting up a patreon account? Please let me know in the comments if I get a really positive reaction Maybe I'll set something up and maybe I could have just like a few short small goals Like I said like maybe one video every two weeks a video a week just depending on the kind of feedback that I get. I don't know. We'll discuss it in the comments. Did you read the rest of the Evil Genius series by Katherine Jinx? No, I didn't read the rest of the Evil Genius series by Katherine Jinx, and I have no desire to. When I pay for a book, or I pay for a movie, or I pay for a video game, or whatever, I expect to receive a full and complete experience. And what Evil Genius did was leave almost everything that it had brought up in its own plot completely unresolved so that if I wanted to know what happened, I would have to buy the next book in the series. If you're going to write a series, that's fine, but every book within the series should be a satisfying self-contained narrative. People should be buying the next installment of your series because they really like it and they want to see more, not because you've held the conclusion Ransom. I really liked that book for a huge chunk of it, but the ending was just a complete slap in the face to me. It burned through every last ounce of goodwill that the novel had built up to that point. I did not look at the rest of the series. I don't intend to. I don't want to. Do you think that there is a chance that any of the Disney Direct DVDs will be good? Well, I mean, there's a chance. With some of these movies, I can definitely tell that there are people who are really trying to make good films, but they just don't seem to be given the budget or the resources necessary to bring that creative vision to life. Maybe one of them could be good. I hope one of them is good eventually. There's been so many of them that statistically there should be at least one of them that's good, right? <sighs> right? Since you and Matt are good friends, do you share any of his passion for theater slash musicals? <laughs> Why don't you put ads on your videos? I don't think people really understand how YouTube ads work. YouTube ads are not actually worth a ton of money to the creators. Really, you have to have at least like 10,000 subscribers before monetizing your videos is worth it. Also, the theme song that I use is Code Monkey by Jonathan Colton. And the way that the copyright license works on that particular song is that you can only use it for free if you're doing it for non-commercial endeavors. If I was making money off of the videos that I put on YouTube, I would have to be paying Jonathan Colton a license to use that as my theme song. That's actually another reason why I haven't set up a Patreon because if I start taking money for a Patreon, then I have to start paying for the license to use Code Monkey as my theme song. So if I was gonna set up a Patreon, I'd have to look into that and see what kind of cost it would be to use that as a theme song. You know, Jonathan Colton seems like a pretty cool guy. He seems like the kind of guy who would want to support small time creators. I don't know, I'll look into it. What movie would you never watch because of ethical reasons? Movies that I wouldn't watch for ethical reasons would be movies where people genuinely got hurt uh, because of neglect by the filmmakers or just because they thought that actually hurting people on screen would be the best way to make it look like people were getting hurt on screen. Also, anything that causes harm to animals. I don't remember the name of the movie, but uh, there's this like this really notorious example 
of this one film that, oh God, uh, what was its name? I don't know, but it was like a movie about these animals uh, and like the animals were like horribly, horribly abused throughout the whole process. There was another movie, I believe it was called Pink Flamingos. It was one of those like shock exploitation movies where horrible, horrible things were going on on screen and the things that were happening on the screen were actually happening in real life. There's a scene in Pink Flamingos, I believe, where somebody eats human feces and they are actual, genuine human feces. It is not prop poop, it's like real human excrement. That is the kind of thing that I would not watch on ethical grounds. And now I feel gross, let's move on. What do you think about your fandom? I have a fandom? No, I'm just kidding. Seriously, you guys are amazing. You guys communicate with one another in a way that is so fantastically respectful, and I, I just, I love that. When you guys disagree with what I have to say, you always do it in a manner that is non-confrontational and rational, and that's so hard to find on the internet, and I just, I appreciate it so much. Thank you guys for being so awesome. What piece of art would you remake or change if you could? Okay, this isn't so much a remake as a recontextualization, but I think you could do something really interesting if you made Peter Parker black. And I know that there's a black Spider-Man, but his name's Miles Morales, he's a different character. I'm talking about taking Peter Parker and making him into an inner city black youth. We would still keep the radioactive spider bite and all that stuff, but the twist that I would put on the origin is that instead of being killed by a criminal, Peter Parker Uncle Ben would be shot by a police officer. Some bad cop on a power trip. And because of the way the system is set up, this police officer is not brought to justice. I think it would be cool, I think it would be really socially and politically relevant, and I think that from that place you could do really, really interesting things that haven't been done before with Spider-Man. I don't know, I think it's a cool idea, that's what I would do. What kind of freelancing do you do, and how do you find work? I do freelance art, specifically image and graphic design. And the way that I find work is partially through looking for it on job websites and partially through various connections that I have. Like right now I'm working on a job for one of my dad's friends that he knows through work. What are your favorite British films? Favorite British films? Uh, the Harry Potter films I like? Uh, Thunderpants? Honestly, most of the time when I watch British entertainment, it's TV shows, not movies. Stuff like Sherlock, Doctor Who, The Old Monty Python, things like that. If you could live anywhere in Europe, where would it be? I've never actually been to Europe before, so I feel like I can't really answer this question fully just because I haven't been there, but I would like to live someplace relatively calm and peaceful. The nice thing about where I live right now is it's in the suburbs, it's relatively quiet, but I also live pretty close to Chicago so I can go into the city and get the city experience when I want it. But I don't think I could live in a city full time, I just, I, I would find the environment a little bit too hectic. So yeah, maybe somewhere in the English countryside or like in Scotland, I think Scotland's really pretty. And with that, we are done with this batch of questions. This was so much fun. I love doing these Q&A sessions, and I'm glad that you guys seem to enjoy them too. Thank you for all the fantastic questions again this year, and until next time, Code Monkeys and Fellow Vedsies, I will see you tomorrow.